Good evening all. Uh, in the previous video, I had posted uh, about uh, a small introduction related to Yehuda Amishai, the Israeli born writer, uh, the Israeli writer who was born in Germany and has uh, immigrated to Israel uh, in the 1930s. Uh, and I have also uh, done a video on uh, the Kingdom of Israel in three parts, uh, which focuses on uh, uh, the Israel uh, during the time of King Saul, uh, then King David, and the present uh, situation, uh, which uh, focuses on uh, the conflicts between Israel and Palestine in the contemporary scenario. So, uh, the poem that we are going to discuss over here is um, a poem written by Yehuda Amishai, that is the anniversaries of war. And uh, I have given a small introduction related to the first line itself, that is Telgath. It begins like Telgath. I brought my children to the mount where once I fought battles so they would understand the things I did do and forgive me for the things I didn't do. So here we assume that the narrator over here or the poet here is a soldier uh, who might be living uh, in the Middle Ages. <coughs> Especially uh, we see that uh, Tel Gath, uh, Tel Safid right now is a city that is uh, situated in Israel and um, it, it is uh, the epitome of civilization. Uh, during the time of King Saul and King David. Uh, and we see that many, many wars were fought in that particular area. Even in the contemporary uh, Israel-Palestine conflict, we see that uh, Tel Gath or Tel Safid was considered to be a, a stock or place where uh, we stocked, uh, this, uh, Israelis stocked their uh, weaponries and armors in uh, in the country so tell gath gath is uh, is the birthplace of goliath whom david had defeated that 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 is that was there in the video uh, i posted last uh, related to the story of david and goliath how what is the uh, story behind david and goliath and one more thing tell means layer layered uh, so uh, Gath is a city where we have uh, white chalk cliffy mountains, uh, white chalk cliffs uh, where the whole rock is pure white, right? And uh, we see we see later on in the after the Crusade War, we 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 happen to see that uh, the Britishers actually sets up the white castle in uh, Tel Gath, which was later destroyed by the Arabs at the Ottoman Empire. So Tel Gath, it is, it is a symbol of civilization, it is a symbol of war, basically many wars had taken place. I told you about the war which, which actually changed the life of Saul, the war which actually uh, made uh, David as a successor of King Saul. That all happens in Tel Gath, right? So every layer in that cliffs Every layer in that mountain actually tells the story of a particular time in history. For example, the first layer talks about the story of King Saul. The second layer talks about the story of King David. Like that, every layer has got its own stories. That's why they are called Telgath. Tel means layered. Gath means white cliffed mountains. Okay, it's a, it's a place in Israel. I brought my children to the mount as i told you it's it's a mountains uh, area i bought my children so here the narrator has brought his children to the mount where once i fought battles where once i fought battles so you can you can assume that the narrator is now a retired person he is he he was a retired soldier and he is having children and they have come to telgat to see what was the uh, condition of uh, uh, the place during the battles, right? Many, peop many people have fought battles. Many bloodshed has happened in that place. 
where once I fought battles. So they would understand the things I did do and forgive me for the things I didn't do. Uh, the thing, uh, the, these two lines indicate uh, the duty of a soldier. The duty of a soldier, in fact, is, uh, is he's, he's bound to obey the orders of uh, the authority. He's bound to, uh, bound to, Here he talks about uh, uh, the two things, uh, the, the, the two things that a soldier usually does. He, he has to obey the authorities. So he's, he's, asking, he's asking his children to understand why he did obey his authorities. Just like uh, King Saul could not, King Saul could not obey uh, King Saul did not obey uh, King uh, the Prophet Samuel's words. Similarly, uh, he's talking about uh, the things I did do and uh, to forgive about the things that I didn't do. That is uh, uh, resembling uh, the uh, the King Saul asking forgiveness to Samuel for uh, for not committing to the words of God okay so that is the first stanza of that particular poem right uh, the distance between my striding legs and my head grows bigger and I grow smaller those days grow away from me these times grow away from me too and I am in the middle without them on this mount with my children. So here he uses uh, two symbols that is uh, the striding legs and head. Striding legs indicate the physical um, this thing and uh, the head indicates the mental ability capability physical capability is uh, signified with striding legs and the head is a mental capability so it grows bigger and i grow smaller that means i i actually am withered uh, both physically i'm a little bit old now right now i cannot go in for war I'm not, uh, 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 it's, it's, it's all a past memory for me right now, right, I, I don't know whether I can go back to uh, the glorious past that I used to go, right, those days grow away from me, those, those days grow away from me means uh, it, is, it is fading off, right, these times grow away from me too and I'm getting older right now as I stand here as time passes he's, he's actually reminiscing uh, the time he's actually uh, talking about the eternit, eternal uh, value of time right these times grow away from me too and I am in the middle without them without them indicates uh, without these uh, soldiers right whom uh, he used to battle with whoever his friends on this mount earlier I used to come into this mount but I, I used to come with the soldiers I used to come with my army but now all these things have faded away from my memory all these are just glorious past now I have come here only with my children right in the third stanza a light afternoon wind blows, but only a few people move in the blowing wind. Bend down a little with the grass and the flowers. Uh, dandelions cover the mound. You could say as dandelions in multitude. Right, so he's talking about light. He's talking about nature in this stanza. Right, we have the introduction of nature by Yehuda Mishai. A light afternoon wind blows. So, it's, it's, it's a pleasant afternoon there. Well, he's standing on the mountain of Telgath. 
but only a few people move to the blowing wind. Here the wind is actually the struggles that is faced by life. Right. So only a few people try to move in the blowing wind. Bend down a little with the grass and the flowers. Right. They don't, they don't completely fall. Certain people, when they face difficulties in life, they become so desperate that they ultimately commit suicide or they ultimately uh, end up their life. But that should not be the case. Uh, whenever a uh, wind is blowing, you should move away with the blind wind. You should be like dandelions. Dandelions are uh, a kind of flowers that that survive in all sorts of situations, all sorts of climate. Right, a dandelion is a type of flora uh, that that uh, that survives in every climate. Right, dandelions cover the mound. So the whole mountain is should covered by dandelions. You could say as dandelions in multitude. So we have many dandelions over here. We have many dandelions in Telgath, like me, uh, who has uh, suffered a lot in life, uh, both physically and mentally, but still is moving on. <coughs> right. So uh, in the next stanza. I brought my children to the mound and uh, we sat there on its back and, the si and its side as in the poem by Shmuel Ho Nagid in Spain uh, like me a man of hills and a man of wars who sang a lullaby to his soldiers before the battle. So here he uh, reminiscence uh, the famous uh, Jewish poet that is Shmuel Hanagrid. Shmuel Hanagrid is a Jewish uh, poet uh, who has uh, fought um, in the Ottoman Empire. He, he headed the Arab group in the Ottoman Empire uh, during uh, 1080 right uh, maybe maybe a thousand years back uh, right and uh, he he was a poet he used to write poetry in uh, battlefields right just like uh, the narrator over here writes poetry along with his children right the difference between narrator and the poet mentioned in this stanza that is Shmuel is that Shmuel wrote poetry with soldiers in the battlefield and the narrator writes poetry with his children he has no war he has no soldiers in sitting in front of him they are just children right so he thinks that um, uh, he, uh, this this person shmuel hanagil is much more greater when compared to uh, the narrator himself he he had a first hand experience of what a soldier's life would be and the soldiers actually listened to uh, his songs in in a kind of first hand experience so he, just like uh, the narrator he also talked about wars he also talked about the hills of gath right uh, so he's again going back uh, to uh, the past here yeah? right and he's actually glorifying the past of uh, that particular writer <clears throat> yet i did not talk to my heart as he did but to my children to the mound we wear the resurrection we wear the resurrection fleeting like this springtime eternal like it too the only difference that, that is there with uh, Shmuel Nagib, Nagib and uh, the narrator was that he, just like I said earlier, he was directly talking to the soldiers, but uh, the narrator is uh, talking to children. Because uh, whatever the narrator is talking, he's talking about the war, the situation of war-like thing. He's, he's talking about the soldiers. When, when uh, the narrator is talking about the soldiers, he wants the listeners to be also soldiers. He wants the listeners to be warriors. 
but here the uh, he is he is actually conveying his ideas to his children and uh, there is only one hope that he has uh, that uh, we are all in in a world where we will be resurrected one day or the other fleeting like the spring time right eternal like it too right we are we are all having uh, both uh, good times as well as bad times and one day or the other we would be having good times to come thank you